When's the last time you cried in public? For me, it was about fifth grade. And I was playing sports. We were playing flag football. I was chasing after my friend Pat, who had the ball. And from the opposite side, though I couldn't see him because Pat's in my way, John, my teammate, was running towards Pat, coming straight at me with Pat in between us. At the last second, Pat juked out of the way, and John and I were left staring each other eye to eye, knowing there's no way we can stop from running into each other. We smash into each other, and I fall to the ground in a heap. When I got up, I was like, don't cry, don't cry. But then I heard all the sounds of the crowd kind of making it clear that my face did not look right. And I was like, okay, I think I can cry. I know I'm in fifth grade, but I can cry. What I didn't appreciate at the time was what a great example of an inelastic collision this was. You see, collisions can be categorized in two ways. Inelastic, that's where things stick together like me and my good buddy John. Or elastic, which is where things bounce off each other. In this lesson, we'll learn to differentiate elastic and inelastic collisions. Let's take a look. Let's begin by reviewing our lesson objectives. First, we'll learn all about inelastic collisions. We'll understand what they are and how to identify them. Then, we'll learn all about elastic collisions, what they are and how to identify them. Lastly, we'll practice identifying elastic and inelastic collisions. You see, when you throw something against a surface, there are just two options. It bounces or it doesn't. So when we throw an ax, or at least throw it well, it doesn't bounce back. That's an inelastic collision. This contrasts with the racquetball. Here the racquetball is launched at a surface and it bounces back over and over again. That's an elastic collision, a bouncy one. In this world of physics, we have special names for these different collision types. First, let's review inelastic collisions. The ax is an example of an inelastic collision. It gets stuck to the target. And that's what we should ask to identify inelastic collisions. Did the objects stick together? If the answer is yes, it's an inelastic collision. Let's review some facts about inelastic collisions. Here is the aftermath of an inelastic collision between a coffee cup and the floor. Before the coffee cup hit the floor, it was moving. And all that energy is now lost. All that kinetic energy is gone. And that's typical of an inelastic collision. During inelastic collisions, kinetic energy is lost. Here's another inelastic collision. Two cars have collided with each other, and notice the shapes of the cars are permanently changed. They've been deformed, and that's typical of an inelastic collision. During inelastic collisions, objects can be deformed. Not always, but often. Last example here of an inelastic collision is an aircraft landing on an aircraft carrier. Before the aircraft landed, they were moving at different speeds the aircraft presumably faster than the aircraft carrier. But once it lands, they move at the same speed. And that's true for inelastic collisions in general. For inelastic collisions, objects end at the same speed. They're always gonna be going the same speed. And that makes sense because they're stuck together. Okay, let's review those three facts about inelastic collisions. First up, we said kinetic energy is lost. So that means something slowed down. At least one of the things is moving slower. Second, we said that shape is often permanently deformed. Something has changed its shape. And lastly, we saw that the final velocity of both objects will be the same. Okay, that's inelastic collisions. Let's now discuss elastic collisions. Here, the racquetball is a good example. And elastic sounds kind of like bouncy. And indeed, to identify elastic collisions, we should ask, did the objects bounce? If the answer is yes, that's an elastic collision. Now let's review some facts about elastic collisions so we can kind of get our heads around what they're like. Here's an elastic collision. This man bouncing on the pogo stick bounces up and down over and over again. He's bouncing. It's an elastic collision. And every time he bounces, the kinetic energy is conserved. So if this collision is elastic, then kinetic energy is conserved. The energy that the man had going down is the same that he has going back up. Here is another elastic collision. These two girls collide with the trampoline over and over again, again, bouncing. 
So always pay attention for that bouncing. If they're bouncing, it's elastic. During elastic collisions, objects are not permanently deformed. Here, the trampoline is deformed, but notice it's not permanent. As soon as those two girls leave the trampoline, it'll go back to its ordinary shape. Another thing to realize about elastic collisions is that objects end at different speeds. For elastic collisions, objects end at different speeds. So two billiard balls that collide with each other, elastically, they bounce off of each other, they can end at different speeds, one moving faster than the other. All right, last example of an elastic collision. Here we have a boy on this bouncy toy, right? Every time he collides with that sand, the bouncy toy is temporarily deformed and then he bounces back up. That looks totally elastic. But the sand is smushed each time and maybe doesn't bounce back. And what that points to is the fact that collisions are generally not perfectly elastic. So perfectly elastic collisions are rare. Here we have a mixture of elastic and inelastic where the sand is deformed, but the bouncy toy isn't. So perfectly elastic collisions are rare. Okay, let's sum up what we learned for elastic collisions. First, we saw that kinetic energy is conserved. The energy before and after of motion is the same. Secondly, we saw that shape is not permanently deformed. Third, we saw that objects can end at different speed. And lastly, we saw that perfectly elastic collisions are quite rare. So many collisions are approximately elastic, but to have it be perfectly elastic is not super common. Okay, now let's ask ourselves if something is elastic or inelastic. So we're going to review a few collisions and I want you to think about if it's elastic or inelastic. Here we have the collision of a car with a pole. What do you think, elastic or inelastic? Remember, the key question is, did it bounce? Well, here that car didn't bounce, it got stuck. Notice it's also been permanently deformed. Something slowed down. Okay, so this is definitely an inelastic collision. What about two football players running into each other? Well, if you paid attention to the intro, you may know what sort of collision this is. At the end, they're stuck together in a pile. Okay, and they've stopped and they're moving at the same speed. So this is, again, an inelastic collision. Last problem. What about this tennis ball bouncing off of the grouse surface? Is that elastic or inelastic? Well, it bounced. So that's gonna tell us that it's elastic. Now, maybe in the process, it bent some grass blades just a little bit. So we might say that it's mostly elastic. And that's true, remember, for almost all elastic collisions, they have some small little variations from a perfectly elastic collision. All right, let's summarize what we've learned. First, we learned all about inelastic collisions. We said they're collisions where things get stuck together and they don't bounce. Instead, they slow down and they end up at the same speed. We learned all about elastic collisions. There, we said that they do bounce and that's the key way to identify them. Lastly, we practiced identifying elastic and inelastic collisions. Hey, hey.